Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. What a great day. The Dow's up 500 points and everybody tells me what a great guy I am. It can't, it, it can't get any better. Bill, thank you for your, come here, come here. Bill, thank you for your introduction. You know, uh, Bill's on the Concord Hospital board with me. By the way, two years in a row for Concord Hospital, not bad. <laughs> and uh, where he always, we can always count on him to know every detail, to ask every qu key question, and to draft the key language. Bill, thanks again. David, thank you. Thank you. Uh, as I was writing this speech, I was very glad that I had some time to get ready. I'm glad I wasn't blindsided by this. Uh, and as I was working on it with Mary, my wife Mary, uh, I was reminded of how much support she's given me in the almost 50 years we've been together. She's, she's been the source of most of my good ideas. She's been a sounding board for issues and problems. She's responsible for the good parts of this speech. Um, and by the way, she told me I had to talk at least five minutes and I think I barely made it. Uh, I'm more than a little abashed by this great honor. Uh, from my point of view, all of my community activity has been pure pleasure. Grandchildren, I've had lots of fun doing it. I learned a lot about Concord. I was part of many good things. I met and worked with great people and uh, had lots of fun. I should be giving an award, not receiving it. Thanks to those of you who made it happen. I know that Bobby Siegel, Bobby, where are you? Bobby and, and, and my son Adam were kind of at the point of the spear getting things done, but many others helped. I got lots of congratulations from so many people. Thanks to you all. I want to take a moment to read one very supportive email I got from a coworker. Uh, he's a UBS advisor down in Boston. He used to be my boss, so he knows me very well. And I quote, wow. Concord is in trouble if this is the man of the year. Remi <laughs> remind, remind me to sell those bonds I have that are secured by city revenues. <laughs> so there you go. Let's see, where was I? Uh, thanks to my family and co-workers who indulged uh, my extracurricular meetings, phone calls, time spent uh, on non-work related projects. Many of you know that my wife Mary was a superb teacher. Those of, how many people had kids that had Mary in this room? A lot of hands. She was a great teacher. Uh, and she almost always held her tongue when I pontificated about education <laughs> while knowing a lot less about it than she did. So thank you, Mary. A special thanks, are Kim and Dawn still here? Would you stand up, please? Kim Masters and Dawn Sela, who have supported me through so much in the office. Thank you very much. They, they took a lot of phone calls for me. Thanks to my parents and parents-in-law. I promise I won't go any farther back than that. Uh, because they taught me that I was very lucky and that I had an obligation to those who uh, needed it. In fact, Mary's dad, Walt Herstein, was a special inspiration. And uh, I'm wearing one of his bow ties tonight. He was a great community servant. Now my pages are out of order here. Let's see what we've got here. Let's see, that's not that, that's not that. I want to also give thanks to Concord. We moved here in 1977, or 1976, we couldn't remember when we were talking about this, and we felt welcome right away. The community and its strong institutions have served us very well. Daycare, wonderful medical care for three generations, a very good education for our kids, um, strong network of friendships forged on the soccer field and the golf course, in community service, and in the schools. I feel a huge responsibility to be a good steward of our strong community assets. And along the way, I've learned a few things. First of all, at every organization, I've worked with talented and dedicated people, whether they're teachers or nurses or executive directors or Melissa who takes care of lunches at Concord Hospital for the food service. There are people, great people everywhere. I feel a special respect for teachers, and they, sometimes they get beat up a little bit in the press. I tried to be an eighth grade social studies teacher. I was a miserable failure. <laughs> I saw just how hard it is to be a good teacher. It takes skills, persistence, hard work, and love for kids. So my hat's off especially to the great teachers I served with. At Merrimack Valley Daycare Center, that was my first board position, probably in 1977. Mary Jane Walner, God knows why, took me on the board. I was a hairy uh, graduate student without a lot to offer, but she took me. And I learned that there are kids who really need a lot. We're a very affluent state, I think either the sixth or seventh richest state in the country. But there are still lots of needs. 
I think about the two-year-old that I met in Adam's class at Merrimack Valley Daycare Center who didn't have long pants to wear in the coldest part of the winter. Or think about this, the fact that we even need a mental health program for one or two-year-olds. So there are needs. On the school board, I learned that kids are really eager to learn. Class offerings at Concord High were routinely oversubscribed. When you drive by Concord High School and you see a bunch of kids kind of hanging around, that's hard to believe, but it's the truth. And it's especially true about the arts. And speaking of the arts, one of the most surprising things I, earn, I learned was that we sent many more kids to college on art scholarships than on athletic scholarships. So support the arts, they pay. <laughs> I can't, yes, okay. At Concord Hospital, and thanks to all the people sitting over there that gave me a PhD course in, in healthcare. Healthcare is really complicated. Who knew? <laughs> we're, 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 we're very blessed in Concord to have a high quality healthcare system, and that system is good enough to attract a steady stream of high quality people to work in it. It's a huge asset to our area. And since this is a Chamber of Commerce, maybe the final lesson I would take is that. Community activity is good for business. It's good for your business. You know people. You make connections. It'll help you. It works for me. So let me close. Am I near five minutes yet? Let me close with a couple of general suggestions. Concord is blessed with long-lived, stable, nonprofit organizations. Those institutions and organizations need good stewards to help them continue their good work. They need our support. They need our financial support. They need us to serve on their boards and committees. And finally, our best and rarest natural resource is our young people. I don't need to tell you how old we are. Just look around this room, number one, and look at all the gray hair. <laughs> if we want to have healthy, uh, excuse me, if we want to have healthy and well-educated people to be our clients and customers, to teach our children and grandchildren, to take care of us when we're sick and or old, we need to make sure each and every young person is healthy and well-educated, every one. Concord, compared to other states, we do very well, but there are still lots of needs. Whether you support your public schools, whether you support Merrimack Valley Daycare or the Children's Place, whether you support the Charitable Fund for its children's initiatives, or you support the New Hampshire Historical Society for what it does for young people's education, and you wouldn't think of the Historical Society, but I've been there when lots of bright faces come through there. Or whether you support Concord Hospital for its subsidy of prenatal care and mental health treatment for all ages. Or pick an organization. I ask you to help. Thank you all very much.